I knew right around the age of eight that I wanted to be a Marine. And I knew day one when I was standing on the yellow footprints that you know, I was destined to be here at this moment in time. And the only thing that was gonna get in the way of me becoming a United States Marine was I was gonna literally have to die. We hit a triple stack tank mine, it was 3155, Mike Mike's, pressure plate ignited. Front left tire hit it, pressure plate went down, bomb goes off, blows me 30 feet to the top of the Humvee. I stick the landing with my head like any good Marine should. And um, because God's a comedian, I never lost consciousness or went into shock. I remember everything. I just remember laying there and I just remember telling God, just asking him, like, please don't take me in front of my Marines. When that bird gets here, I'm all yours, but please don't let my Marines watch me die. That's all that mattered to me right then. At that point, at that moment in time, that's all I cared about. I was pissed off because guys that I love more than life itself are still in harm's way. And I was sucking up good oxygen in a hospital bed. You know, that, that messes with your head. And so I was angry. In the military, we experience this total awareness of who we are and we know exactly who we belong to and we know exactly why we exist. And sometimes when you come home, you no longer have that clarity of purpose and person and, and tribe. And, and I think that can lead to despair. And, and despair is where you make the, the bad decision you never get to come back from. Some days are worse than others, but uh, you know, that's what painkillers were for, right? I mean, if I was numb, I didn't have to feel anything. And so unfortunately, I, I mean, I really abused my medication. I was taking 50 to 55 pills three times a day and uh, eating 8 to 12, 400 milligram fentanyl pops a day. So it was massive amounts of painkillers. I remember my wife telling me the difference between you eating a bullet or living the way you're living right now is time, but the outcome's the same. You're slowly killing yourself. What we're always looking out for and what we're always real mindful of is that person who's beginning to feel like they're not a contributor in any way. They're nothing but a drain or a drag on the people they love the most. Or those who have yet to discover kind of this next heroic, amazing version of themselves. I don't know what was worse, being blown up or coming off the drugs. Physical pain reminds you you're alive, but mental pain will test your will to stay that way. And so there's one point where I finally just said, you know what, I'm sick of slowly withdrawing, I'm just gonna lock my door, I'm shutting it, and what happens, happens. And during that time, you know, when I was ultimately try trying to better myself and live well, I went through the hardest time because it was, I've never been that violently ill in my life. And that was the only time where I, I told God, you know, like, I'm out, I'm done. I'm ready when you are. It was about 12 days of pure hell. But I remember it was day 13 or 14 and I woke up and took a shower and it was like I'd never taken drugs before. But Jake has a grit and a resolve and a fortitude that developed um, through immense perseverance. I know a lot of those words have a lot of similar meanings, those synergistic cap or properties in all of them, but Jake has had to earn those things. And he'll tell you that he didn't earn them for himself. It was when he was finally willing to allow people to help him, um, or at least um, for people to surround him that these walls broke down. And it didn't happen fast. If you met Jake maybe four years ago, he still was bitter, still resentful, still angry. Um, and that, you're talking about 10 years since he was hit. So there was more years of, of, of the trenches than there is the Jake we see now. As of eight months ago, I know more warriors who died by suicide than were killed in combat. And that's hard for me. Because if I sat here and told you that I never thought about suicide, I'd be lying to your face. And I thought about it every day for quite some time. But at the end of the day, that's 
Like I always say, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. But you're not going to win alone. You have to be willing to get with your team, get with your fellow warriors, get with people who have suffered through things that you're suffering through and learn from them and reach out to them. And if the first place doesn't work, go on to the next place. Reach out, continue reaching out. You have to want to get better. And I always challenge people, if you're in a dark place and you're unsure of where you are, one, go help someone for no reason. But two, I challenge you not to be afraid of who you could be if you're willing to be okay.